you return to the same you know, handful of kingdoms a few times, they look very different depending on the circumstances. So the first time you go to the Sand Kingdom, it's the daytime. And this is what we're showing you here. This is part of the floor where I'm here. Um, this is a segment from a little bit later, but you can get there if you're on the floor. Uh, and then after a little bit here, I'm going to uh, show a bit from the nighttime version of the Sand Kingdom. And then later on, we'll do some more of that kind of shenanigan with the City Kingdom. Sorry, the Metro Kingdom. I think that's one of the things that's really impressed me over the course of development while oh. this. Oh no, Mario! Sorry! Uh, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> uh, but watching this game come together, and it's certainly still in development, so there's a lot of stuff the dev team's still working on, mm -hmm. but within the kingdoms, as they built them out and continued to uh, refine them and add more content, there are so many interesting places that you can find uh, within each space, and certainly even over the course of E3, we're not even showing you uh, everything that's in either one of the kingdoms that we're showing here or no, the all. Wooded Kingdom. There, there's so many interesting places to find, particularly off the beaten path, I think. I should also mention that uh, not every kingdom has a day and a night cycle, but they all do change you know, depending on, on game circumstances. You know, right now, the desert is frozen. You, you know, Mario can eventually solve this problem. It won't be frozen anymore, that kind of, that kind of difference. When I was playing this, I can't be patient when I'm on these platforms and I'm doing backflips and <laughs> just running around and I get killed so many Norm times just because I can't sit, stand still. I got ADD or something. Normally, I'm kind of the same way, but I got humbled just now by falling, so I'm playing a little bit more safe. Oh, oh. but not safe enough. You're almost there. Okay. There we go. So one thing I want to mention for folks who are watching, uh, our last segments we were using the Joy-Con Plus wrist straps, but in this segment we're going to be using the Pro Controller uh, that mm -hmm. is fully supported as well as any other controller option that we've got yeah. available for the Switch. So we're mixing it up a little bit here just to show you yeah. how smooth the controls feel with Pro as well. Yeah, so this is the Moai Habitat, home, uh, uh, logically enough, of the Moais. That's these, these guys. These guys awesome. They're kind of shy. Run away! <laughs> also, this here is a Moon Fragment, or, yeah. Um, and uh, you need five of those, as you can probably tell by the little counter on the uh, top middle of the screen, to get, get a power moon. But they're scattered around here. And the other thing that's significant about Moai is besides their being extremely shy. And having fantastic fashion sense. Yeah, is that they are <laughs> capturable. And which means mustacheable. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, that looks glorious. Yeah. Oh. You'll notice my control prompt there is put on take off shades. Why would I want to put on my shades, you say? It doesn't get too bright here. Moais can see invisible stuff. So that little moon fragment there that's hovering over the, the poison lake of awful is uh, totally gettable. But also, having your sunglasses on makes the Moais walk slowly. So. And that's the reason you don't just keep them on all the time. They're just kind of chilling out when they got the sunglasses on, like just kind of taking it easy. Yeah, but yeah, it's also it. really cute when they're doing that really slow stroll. They have this really cute little hum that they do where they're just kind of like moseying along. Yeah, I don't know if you can catch the that on the screen. Cute. Maybe? Let's see if we can pop the sunglasses down. There it is. <laughs> yeah. So I was also going to point out that there's these birds here that are hovering, are, you know, apparently hovering in midair, but of course the Moai can see that they're on this thing. And there's some co collectible coins over there, but the Moai can't jump. They're so if you want to get them, there's the birds are giving you a hint of what, what's going on there. But you have to be brave and trust your analog stick skills to rock in a relatively sa straight path. Yes, OK. Wow, you did it the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> What, what's the easy way? Turn the camera, right? And oh, then just go straight yeah, forward. No, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to take all the sport out of it. <laughs> and actually, just coming back to those birds, one thing that's worth keeping in mind in this game, birds seem to know what's up. If you're not sure where to find uh, maybe that next moon that you need, keep an eye out for birds and yeah. see what they're getting up to. Yeah, you can see the shadow of a bird up there, and experience tells me, oh, look, it's glowy. He does look hmm. a little unusual for a bird. Yeah, pay attention to birds. There's several kinds in this game, and they are all meaningful. Except maybe pigeons. I'm not sure they do anything. I think they just make the world a better place by just yeah. being there and bouncing around. They might just be decorative, but that they're pretty sense. cool. Yeah. So looking around, looking around for more bits of uh, moon fragments. Oh, yeah, we've got Bowser's oh. footprints there as well. Yeah, Cappy is, you know, if, if you haven't seen our earlier segments, then that's Cappy, who is your actual hat in his native form of a white top hat. These birds seem to be reminding me, oh, there's a moon fragment up here. And then let's head over.
to this conspicuous elevator spot here. So remember that, sorry? Oh, no, no, you go ahead. I was just going to remember, Moai can't jump, so they need these elevator things. And look, birds hovering. Yep. So just as a re quick recap for folks who are maybe uh, coming to us a little bit later on uh, over the E3 process here and not sure what Odyssey is all about, this is a Mario game that's really in the spirit of Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine. So we're coming back to this uh, kind of sandbox style of Mario engineering where we've got these really fascinating spaces that are really densely packed with content that you want to surprise yourself by tracking down new things, experimenting. And uh, if you're interested actually in the background of that uh, kind of sandbox Mario style content, uh, we actually just put up a post on the Nintendo Treehouse Tumblr, uh, Bill Trinan talking about this concept, uh, Hakoniwa, in Japanese, this kind of walled garden concept that came about with Bonsai. Mm -hmm. And it's a really interesting way to understand how the developers are really thinking about the sandbox space that they're building. Yeah. So I just got the last of the moon fragments, which caused a power moon to appear. And now I'm going to abandon this guy up here where I he will never, ever escape. How, how does he get down? <laughs> he doesn't. He, he might have a family <laughs> down there, man. And I'm just going to be heartless about it. I'm he's sorry, cool. buddy. He's put on his shades. He's, he's chill. We won't forget you and your sacrifice. I will. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to remember these capture targets. <laughs> and I like the same rules still apply. Even if Mario didn't capture them, they mm. still move in the same way where the shades makes them move slow, and yeah, then they have yeah. to take them off to run away. Gotta, it looks surprised with his little yeah, shades up there. It All is right. interesting for a giant creature made of stone that they are as bashful as they are. They are, Pretty yeah. sure they could just walk across you <laughs> and deal with right. you if they had a problem with you. So that was where, uh, that was the daytime segment I was going to show you. Now I'm going to switch over to the nighttime segment. Yeah. So this again is uh, another point, and we can't really talk about the where we are in the story, but a different spot. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, what I really like about the desert here is, I'm not sure if this was the intention or not, but there's a lot of throwbacks to Super Mario Land for me. Uh, I saw uh, the Moai and that's in the original desert type levels of that game. And we're going to see something else in this upcoming segment, too, that I think might remind people of a certain boss in that yeah. game. Yeah. So here we are in uh, Toaster Arena at night. It is, of course, cold as it's still because it's still frozen. Like I said, Mario can, uh, can fr fix that later. But uh, no. whoa, and, oh. uh, and the guys. undead ha haunt these lands. <laughs> 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 so these little guys are Chinchos. And yep. They make the desert sand situation much more challenging because they keep springing out, yeah. uh, particularly when you're in wide open spaces, and they will just keep gathering. You have to be very careful to keep an eye on your surroundings because you can have a whole bunch of those guys sneak up behind you if you're in the middle of something yeah. else. You won't even realize they're there. And they just there will, there's an infinite supply of them. There is no way to like deal with them so you can like explore in safety. So I also wanted to highlight a few of the uh, fast travel options. So because the, the worlds are huge, you have to be able to get around quickly. Uh, one thing. If you've activated a checkpoint flag, as Cappy helpfully explains, you can go straight to it. Uh, this map, I have, you know, haven't done much in this particular map, but I also wanted to point out the sort of travel brochure thing we're doing here. It, uh, there's little articles about you know, highlights of the, uh, of the areas, and done exactly like it was a, you know, the, the sort of travel map you might get at the hotel lobby. And if you peruse that text, there might be some hints in there as there well. There are, yeah. It's worth reading the brochure. Yep, it is. So this is a Jaxi, and I think this is what Matt was uh, alluding to. Right. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. I love his voice. <laughs> yes. So Jaxis are a very fast way to travel and not entirely relaxing. Exhilarating. Yeah, let's go with Exhilarating! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Giddy up! So they are very fast. And they can just plow through the Chinchos, which is nice. Uh, but they're... OK. Uh. <laughs> you can, you, you know, as the oh, button no. tells you, you can break. They're immune to the poison. Um, you can break, but you can't break for very long. Uh, so you basically just use it to make quick corrections. I wonder yeah. if you can swing the camera around uh, to show when he breaks, because his, his animation when he breaks is really cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you making me go slow? <laughs> and Mario just barely holding on. Yeah, his facial expression when he's riding by Jaxi is pretty priceless. Yeah. And these little spots that we'll see here with the bench and the little signpost, those are actually Jaxi stands. Yeah. So if you need to call back your Jaxi, that's a convenient mm -hmm. way to do it. Yeah, if I go into this building and come out, the Jaxi won't be there anymore, but I could summon him again with, at the Jaxi stand. And it's honestly really fun to just like whip around this kingdom on the Jaxi. Yeah. <laughs> he's a lot of fun, but be careful about edges. Yeah. 
and cliffs. <laughs> There's also one uh, Jaxi specific sublevel that I am probably not going to attempt today because uh, I'm terrible at it. But you just involve you have to have really good like Jaxi steering controls. Yeah, I think if you thought that whole penguin slide in 64 was hard, uh. wait till you try <laughs> the Jaxi maze. It is. Not for the faint of heart. All right, so here's bullet bills. Got to capture those. As we mentioned earlier, bullet bills are one of the capture targets you can't hold on for very long because they do tend to explode. And they have this nice little headlight up front, which is really nice when you're trying to do yeah. this precision steering in a space like this. So you can kind of line up your positioning, and then maybe yeah. you want to give yourself a speed boost. You can do that and feel confident about where you're heading. Yeah. All right, so now there's another cannon over here. Basically, every time you see a, a platform in this particular area, you want to trade out your... Um, your bullet bill because you need a fresh one. And I oh, decided to be a daredevil and grab this, and conveniently my enemies destroyed each other. But and you really do want to grab all these coins. Yeah. Uh, another little bit of recap. So we've got two different kinds of currency in this game. We've got the gold coins, traditional Mario coins, which you can collect in any of the kingdoms. And you can spend those in any of the kingdoms as well at the Crazy Cap Shop. But then those purple coins are the regional currency. And you can only collect those and spend those in the kingdom that they're from. Yeah. yeah. But there's oh, a lot of good God stuff. dang it. <laughs> oh, my, no. <laughs> I'm confused about left and right there for a sec. I was about to say, like, Motokuro-san yesterday talked about the reasoning behind that and uh, me uh, going to foreign countries myself and dealing with different currencies depending on where I'm at, I thought really made sense and I thought it was a really cool touch. Yeah, <laughs> I remember uh, I was in Japan for the first time and, uh, and I was completely like, I don't know what to do with any of this money. <laughs> like, <laughs> is this the correct, you know, I just gave bills every time and I collected this huge mass of coins that I didn't know what to do with anymore because I didn't know what they were worth. Yeah, I know when you always felt kind of guilty going to a new place and you're just holding out your money like, this some of this is the <laughs> right? <laughs> which, which ones do you need? Uh -uh. And here money is upside down triangles. Yeah. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah. And there's a lot of cool stuff you can buy with the currencies. So uh, different outfits for Mario is certainly part oh. of it. Uh, there are souvenirs that you can use to decorate the outside of your Odyssey, and also you can decorate the inside. And some other goodies in those as well. So it's worth hitting every crazy cap you find just to see what they've got in stock. Yeah. It, uh, it also occurred to me, just as you said that, Matt, that the money here is upside down. Uh, I, maybe this isn't fated to be. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> the money here is upside down triangles, we'll uh, and it's probably a reference to the, to the inverted pyramid, which right. is one of the big uh, right. local scenes. I'm going to try this one more time, and then we'll just move on to the city material I had planned. I believe in you. You got this. Thank you. Thank you. And you should, you're I believe your, in your, your next faith attempt. in me was no. misplaced. I, I believe in your next <laughs> attempt. Maybe we'll skip those coins and go for the wider one. All right, there's a slightly wider door there. Let's try that, right, and, then, right. and then I'll give up. All right. One other thing that I know um, Motokurasan mentioned uh, earlier on 83 as well, I don't know if it came up in the stream, but just through a conversation earlier, is the fact that in this kingdom in particular, a lot of it was inspired by his own trip to Mexico and how much he loved it there. Oh, and the okay. architecture and uh, the aesthetic there. And I think the development team has actually drawn a lot over uh, personal travel that a lot of them have done into different places. Oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't, I, I, that was not on the stream because I, I didn't hear that. That's neat. It's a, a bit of a love letter to, to their experiences traveling. It's a lot like driving a car without brakes. Well, yeah, and it's a lot like... Oh, you got it. You're good. Shooter Both. games on yes. like, uh, the arcade era or a bit era where you had like overhead view. Yeah, yeah. So I love how this game has the 3D adventure. It has like the 2D platforming with Mario. And it also has like these little just nods to different genres. And you're, it's all in the same game. It's so great. Yeah, it's fun as you see the the surprises that come up as you're going through these spaces, too, where you never really know what to expect, even when you go through a warp pipe. Right, And yeah. it, it could really be anything, and it could be something very strange or very unusual that you hit there. But, uh, I don't know, it makes you want to explore. I mean, I, you could just, like, race through and finish the game and save Peach, but, you know, she, she's hopefully okay to wait a little minute while yeah. you, you... She's know, done this before. Do some oh, yeah. She's yeah. good. Yeah. Gotta enjoy your trip, right? <laughs> oh, and Pauline there, of course. So, yeah. Mayor Pauline. Mayor Pauline, yes. So, here we are back in the, uh, the Metro Kingdom. And it's daytime, which is you know, where the uh, the floor demo gets you. And the uh, we're gonna use some regional coins here because there is a level that you can only get to if you've got a certain outfit. So I'm going to grab all my regional coins that I can find. And there's actually a really interesting little audio cue over there a little further. I wonder if we can go back and hear oh, that. Oh, back over this way. A little bit further back the way you came, but that's actually a little audio cue that tells you a moon is nearby. Hmm. Little sparkly I don't sound. know if we want to go hunt it out now, but yeah. it's worth keeping uh, an ear out if you happen to be here at E3 and you're playing the demo. Yeah. If you start hearing this little noise, oh, I think I it's right exactly. yeah. spinning around there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it, it pays to pl uh, play this game with headphones. All right, so here I am turning myself into electricity to travel by wires, as everyone does in the city. <laughs> and let's see, here's a couple of regional coins. And I believe that's actually a portrait of Mayor Pauline on the uh, on the coins. Right. Which is cool. Yeah, I think yeah. she's a very beloved civic servant. Yeah, when you talk to see. folks here, a lot of folks in New Donk City have lovely things to say yeah. about Mayor Pauline. And uh, yeah, she seems like she's doing a great job running the city. Yeah. Right. There's one lady who wants to talk about how much she loves her hat because it's just like Mayor Pauline's hat. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> Inspiring fashion. <laughs> trend is. setting. But I like that there's so many little nods to Donkey Kong in this space that you got to think, okay, mm. Pauline, like they're on good terms now. Yeah. Oh, and I was mentioning fast travel options here. Another one, of course, is the motor scooter. <laughs> this is cute. Which is certainly the most stylish way for Mario to get around town. And actually a really nice execution of HD Rumble as well. Unfortunately, we can't really communicate yeah. that clearly to folks who are watching, but uh, it actually feels like you're riding a scooter. You feel that rumble in your hands as if you were holding onto the handlebars. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty lovely. Mario, not the best driver. He's, no. <laughs> he also does not approve of pylons. His, uh, his practice is all in <laughs> driving bullet wheels. rat there? Yeah, there's rats here in this otherwise fantasy city, <laughs> which is very strange to me. Oh, I know where there's some regional coins. Let's go over here and become one of these guys for no really good reason, except that it's super fun. Oh, actually, why are we nearby? Should we maybe pop by to show folks why you're collecting these coins? Oh, the crazy cap? Because we, we have a purpose. Well, I, I will show them when we get the outfit. OK. Yeah. They'll figure it out. They're There's smart. Pauline. <laughs> Yeah, so Pauline, as we mentioned uh, at this point, in our first segment, we talked about how the, the actual story objective here is for her, help her collect up a bunch of, um, of musicians. And uh, I guess I have choices. There's, there's lots of collectible coins all over the place. And I've overprepared, and I know where they all are now. Ooh, Actually, not player. even remotely all of them. Nice. All right, so I needed 15. I've got 15. Get one more for good measure. One more for good measure. That way I can tip the guy. All right. Zoom. Oh, that was another new move there. Right. Um, the sort of power tackle. I can't remember what it's called right now. Um, and you can go into a roll after that, right? Why, yes, you can. Yeah, <laughs> this is my favorite new move. I love that. Yeah, the roll is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> it will quickly become your favorite way of getting from A to B. All right, so Crazy Cap stores, all of them are divided into two. There's the place where you spend your yellow coins and the place where you spend your purple coins. And this is actually the original location, so oh. this is, I think, the flagship store. Exclusive. OK, yes. All right. So yeah, this builder helmet might look familiar to uh, people who have enjoyed other Mario games. Yes, sir. That outfit is off the chain chomp. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you, heard it here for, oh, you heard it here first, folks. Oh, my goodness. That's got to catch on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now I am fashionably dressed. Oh, wow. Nice. That's really nice. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. So as we showed <coughs> in our earlier Ow. segments, there are some spots that uh, you have to meet a certain dress code expectation yeah. to get through. Yeah. And I'm climbing and rolling. And this guy. Hi, this guy. <laughs> He's... A simple little man. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the fact that he has no concern at all that you were like running and rolling and bounding <laughs> over to him, as you would expect a building inspector yeah. to do as they're on their way to work. So this is what building inspectors in New Dunk City do. Um, they check out the uh, the electrical wires for fuzzies, I guess. Oh, fuzzies. Oh, and these guys, I can't remember what they're called right now, but they're bad. <laughs> Oh, no, oh, no, no, dang it. OK. So this treasure chest is filled with coins, a fair number of coins. A lot of coins. Yeah. A lot of coins. Nice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they just keep coming. 
Yeah. And coins, of course, are also how ah. you come back from uh, losing a life. So you definitely want to have as many coins yeah. as possible at your disposal. And there's also some really cool stuff that's available in the uh, the Yellow Crazy Cap stores, uh, especially in the late game. They start adding more more products later on, and some of those are super fun. All right, so I have to be careful now. I'm down to my last part. Zoom up here, and then over here, and then back down here, and zoom. A lot of zooming. It is cool to be electricity. All right. And then over here, All right. we've got moon fragments. And got to, of course, watch that timing yeah. super carefully. Whoop. Almost. What? Oh, that wasn't. That was too There's much. There's one more down the There's corner. There's one more down there. All right. You got Not one too hit late. left. It's the moment of truth. Yeah. Here we go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, dude. Good job. Nice. nice. All right. That made the heart go. Or the moon go. Thinking about hearts because I'm down to one. Well, in the good news right. column, that moon will recharge you once you grab it. Yes. So that is get indeed your back. good news. And. Yeah. Nice. Let's do it. Okay. I think you've got one more spot to show Yeah, us, one more yeah? spot. I was going to switch awesome. to the nighttime version of, uh, of New Donk City. Which is uh, considerably more perilous. Yes. You, you actually, when you first arrive in New Donk City, it is nighttime, and it is, uh, it is a grim and gritty environment. It's, uh, uh, let's see here. And this as well, content that's not available on the show floor. Yeah. Here at E3, we've got uh, the Sand Kingdom and Nature Kingdom in the daytime. So this nighttime content is uh, exclusive for folks who are watching our stream. So yeah. thank you for watching, by the way. Yeah. yeah. And I love the city at night because it's so different than the city during the day. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's very moody. <laughs> and maybe people are thinking, oh, maybe it's the club scene or maybe just the bad people are out. But uh, no. you'll, get a, you'll get a good idea. Of, it's uh, grosser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. We'll be able to hop in here in a second and take a look. Yeah. All right. So let's see. And again, of course, this is only a, a small slice of what each of these kingdoms has to offer as yeah. well. So hopefully we're looking forward to exploring them for themselves. Huge yeah. and convoluted and filled with secrets. Uh, all, right. All, right. all right, here we go. We can go and switch, bring the feet up again. So way up there at the top of the building. Uh, all right, so this is a THL-specific uh, ROM that is already activated the checkpoint flag. And... I'm going to hop inside here for a minute because I want to show you both these super gross urban stingbees. You may remember stingbees from, I believe it was Mario 64. They were sort of cute conical bees. These, these are much, are so much cute. grosser. <laughs> yeah, they're little maggot you form creeps me out. Yeah. But also, I wanted this thing. So the life up heart is the only sort of traditional power up in the game, uh, but with so many things you can capture, it's the only one you need. I There's so many the different ways you can get powers in this game. The fact that Bowser is just advertising his wedding by postering yeah. all over all of these kingdoms <laughs> yeah. is it's an interesting choice. Yeah, and he paid <laughs> someone to put a lot of them up, but not well enough to put them up right. They're all peeling off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it feels very Bowser. So I love the, the rain and like some of it collects on the screen, as you can probably see, which is super cool. Yeah, they've really right. done a fantastic job with the water effects. Yeah. And yeah, New Donk City is kind of eerie in its rainy darkness. You can hear a lot of sirens in the background. There's obviously a lot of bad stuff going on in the yeah. city right now. First responders have their hands filled because there's a giant robot caterpillar on the building. <laughs> I think you can deal with that, though. You can just take care of this little problem. For yeah, us. yeah. So yes, this is Mecha Wiggler. I would say this is my absolute favorite iteration of this enemy. Yeah. So good. He's, he's one of the scarier things that's been in a Mario game. <laughs> but I will tell you, he is the second scariest boss to me in this game. We're not going to show you the other one yet. Oh, we'll talk about that after stream, because I want to know who your, yeah. your number one baddie is. Yeah. I like when he lands, he gets those little jitters up okay. his legs. So I need to grab a Sherm, that's what these tank guys are called, and quickly blow up the other one so I don't have to deal with him. And then I need to... Oh, ah, not get shot. And turn out all the lights on the Mecha Wiggler. 
Okay, good, good, good. Nice. And he grows. Yay, all right. So now he gets mad, as wigglers are wont to do. And one of the big challenges, I think, with the Shurms, they're incredibly powerful, but also slow to move. I mean, they're yeah. tanks, so they're not going to turn on a dime. They're not going to be incredibly fast, so you have to be very mindful of the movement yes. whenever you've got a Shurm. Oh, wow, Ooh, that nice was close. Dodge. <laughs> Thanks. Dodging as a tank is, uh, is a skill. Yeah, you can't really strafe a tank. Yeah. I also like how the Wiggler changed colors when he got really angry and started moving fast, just yeah. like you would expect. Just like you expect, yeah. yeah. Someone engineered that exact behavior for some insane reason. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, and you can actually shoot these big old energy ball things out of to be If you can't dodge them and you know, shoot things. Oh, yes. wow. Nice shooting. Thanks. Uh, and that is the upper limit of where my turret can fire. Okay, I'll have to... This guy definitely makes you miss the traditional cuddly wiggler, doesn't it? <laughs> it really does. My son has a plush one of those, and you know it's it's super fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good luck now. Oh, oh wow! There will never be a plush of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, down to regular okay. health. Oh, nice! One more. Oh no! Oh. Missed it. Oh, and I'm down to two. Hopefully, one of those has a heart in it soon. Yeah, some of them have hearts. I'm used to having a little more uh, gyroscopic aiming from the separated Joy-Cons, and I'm missing it. Oh. Yes! Oh, there it is. There it is! Nice. Right. It's so hard, too, when you're fighting this boss, and you have to trundle your way slowly yeah. toward a power-up, like, please, don't kill me, don't kill me! Yeah! All right. Dude, there we nice go. Nicely done. Thank you. <laughs> and we got our grand moon. Whee! So that was our Mecha Wiggler, and I think that's actually where we have to stop.